this is just a guide flight that they look at. If the girl is under 12, almost never a dad will get custody if the mom and they're on equal footing. A boy under the age of five, a dad will almost never get custody if the boy is under the age of five. Even if the mom and dad get along with each other, even if it's a lovely divorce, that's just like a, a template that they go by, like a mandate that they go by. 12-year-old girls always go to mom. Five-year-old and under always goes to mom. That's just the way they are. That's just the way it's always been for thousands of years. So like I said, yeah, you're, you're, right, you're dancing right on that line where the judge might actually toss your phone once that 11-year-old uh, hits 12. That's like the magic number with girls when, in judges' minds. And five is the magic number for boys in judges' minds. That a dad could do just as good as a job with a boy who's five, six, seven years old that a mom could do. Right? He's not nursing anymore. He's not right. being, his butt's not being wiped anymore. That's basically where they're looking. And 12, obviously, you know why with a 12 year old and a girl needs to be with the mom, obviously. You can't teach him things, believe me. Right. So that, that's why the judge is looking at this. So when the judge asks you what's changed, what I would do is I say, well, the boy's over five and the girls are over 12. That's what's changed. And that's basically all we need to do. And then now we got 50 50. See, that's what I'm saying. I try to look for a thing where a judge is looking, like me. If I was a judge, and this is all I'm looking at, and like I said, these guys boo and hiss me on my show all the time, I said, look, dude, this isn't my belief. This is this is Bible stuff I'm going on. This is stuff that goes back thousands and thousands of years, 5 and 12. It's, I'm sorry, that's just the way it is. He's like, well, no, that could be just as I was like, look, maybe they can. I know as I am a man, I can't. I can't do it. I would much rather have a girl under the age of 12, 13 with the mom. Believe me. Boy, five and over, we got it made. We don't need her no more. She could drop dead for all. I mean, a boy's got it covered. So, like I said, that's what you base I would do with a judge, because that's the number one thing he's looking for. He's looking for the age. And a judge's eyes, that's the first thing they look for. What's different? Well, the child got older. Good. How old? Six and 13. Lovely. So see, that's what the judge first looks for. I mean, the judges are just practical. They don't know you from a ham sandwich. They don't know who you are. They don't care who you are. They just want to know that, look, you know what? This is basically the, the, the roadmap that we would let to believe that this works. And I want to try to maintain, it's called status quo. That's job one for the judge is to maintain status quo. And you have to basically convince them why it should not remain the way it is. You just say, hey, look, six and 13. And the judge will say, okay, good enough for me. That's a change. That's a big change. So that's the whole thing. So you say the whole, the girls should be over 12? Over yep. 12. Yep. And the, boys, and the boys have to be over 5. Yep. Well, I'm just saying, this is, if you're asking me, like I said, two of my friends are judges. And, uh, you know, well, obviously I've talked to my friends a lot. And uh, these are just simple things that every judge looks for. Okay. And, and I'm just telling you, that's what they're looking for. They, like I said, you're just another number on a docket. They couldn't care less. So when the paperwork comes by, how old's the kid? Six and 13, great. Dad has equal access, fine. And then we work from there. And then you're gonna have to start explaining that you have the capacity to actually devote that much time to being with the child. Right. You have the capacity to be home. You know, like I said, I've, uh, I work with some women and they, then they couldn't get custody of the kid because they had to uh, be home for the child to come off of the school bus. Right. And, and, the, and the judge was like, well, if you can't make time for your busy day to be off, be there for when the child comes off the school bus, we might as well leave the kid in foster care where the foster care parent is there to be there for the child to come off the school bus. So the woman actually went out and she modified her time of work. She actually quit like a job where she'd make a fifteen dollars an hour to get a job she made ten dollars an hour so she'd be home when the school bus came. But it's so funny, when she did that, the judge said, Okay, great. Now you got a judge a job where you'll be home at three o'clock. But you're making like five you're making five hundred dollars less a month. You can't pay for that lifestyle. You're gonna have to you, we can see that your bills you're not gonna be able to swing this. So you're basically just bullshitting us and you're taking this low paying job just to get the kid and we think you're just gonna be a latch latchkey kid. And you're going to go right back to your old job. So, no, you know, we're not buying you bullshit. So the lady's oh. like, that didn't work. So, see, that's what I'm saying. The judges, uh, they're, they're a tricky lot, man. Especially when, uh, like I said, when when you and your wife 
combined man, one and one became one, one and one to become two. So the, the child kind of dilemma is always like a tricky thing because it's your property and it's your wife's property. And But you say, wait a second, our property is exclusive to one and one alone from all other society, that's right. But the only way you could deal with the child thing, you have to split the baby in half, literally, right, to share that property. So that, like I said, that's a unique situation in uh, in our culture, but so is uh, the only other one I can uh, explain other than that with the child is uh, when people say to me, uh, what do you think about uh, uh, like the right to bear arms or like concealed weapons? I said, well, in law, to conceal a weapon is a death sentence. And but, and but legally, you could actually get a permit and conceal a weapon. But there is nowhere in law that's ever existed on planet Earth where it was okay to conceal a weapon. It was always thought to be the most disgusting, vile thing you could do was to conceal a weapon. When you walked into the king's court, you had to have all your weapons exposed so the king could see that you're a dangerous man. If he found out that you had a, a knife hidden, it was instant death. Yeah. So you had to, you, all the weapons had to be up in view so the people walking down the street can see what they're going to encounter. But in this society, we believe it's better to keep society, uh, uh, you know, delusional by concealing the weapons that, oh, it's all safe to walk down the street. Nobody's carrying weapons. And underneath the codes, code, the codes, everybody's carrying weapons. See, so that's the only way in law that it's backwards, other than, like I said, with a child. That in law, it's always unlawful to conceal a weapon, but in, 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 it's always legal. You can legally conceal a weapon. But you know, it's funny, the, and 